next. Yeah, Paulie made a, a homemade lasagna for 85 people that he's doing. They're bringing it over to Mount Sinai. You know, Paulie and Chris, they got a lasagna they've been working on for the doctors. You know, you don't need soundproofing. You can use meatballs. Yeah. Yeah. This is the second 9-11 Chris Italius lived through. Yeah, imagine 9-11 happening now and the firefighters in the towers as they're burning, doing like dance videos for TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how you doing? My, uh, my name's uh, Tommy DiBattista. I'm from Staten Island. And the way you make me feel, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to ever forget. <laughs> Baby girl. <laughs> Shit. Oh, dude, it really is. Uh, it's a fucking scary time. Every seven o'clock hits. Every day is it the same thing in L.A. Tim? Where seven o'clock hits and it's what just these cheering and honking realize. of these, horns these, and people play the musical instruments. To sleep. The nurses and doctors are trying to sleep, and mm. people are banging pots and pans. <laughs> I mean, it's. Could anything make less sense than that? Like, We're recording right now, Brian. Right? We're just going. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, dude. The L.A. dude, Lewis, no one really cares. So L.A., they, it'll be like one guy banging a pot and, and no one else. Yeah, and that guy has been banging a pot for 45 years. Yeah, that guy, is, it, he doesn't even know there's a pandemic. Yeah. The first time I saw it happen, I didn't know what was going on. I actually posted a video on my Instagram. I was like, why is everyone cheering right now? I started just cheering as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You like, thought, Lewis thought the pandemic was over. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's over. I Quarantine's they, over. Good. I thought they reopened the movie theaters. They yeah. don't do that shit in my neighborhood, but I, I took a bike ride like a week ago. I finally got out and got some exercise, and I rode through Williamsburg. It was like Williamsburg by the water, where these, yeah. are, just, these are just German people whose like, you know, family <laughs> back in Germany like probably invented the virus. Yeah. <laughs> probably the family that funded the research to make the virus. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, oh, you have a clapping for the healthcare worker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a shame we can't go to work at uh, our, uh, the apothecary store we own yeah. in Red Hook. <laughs> oh, we, might, no. we might have Why? to close our, our fake business that just launders our parents' money into our, you yeah. know, into our hair care routines. I, why? I mean, it almost feels a little bit like condescending. Like, what is the, what are the, like, what is using fucking noisemakers and clapping and screaming going to do? Also, yeah. also, it's, it's, it's not even like, Healthcare workers are even here. We're in Harlem. There's no fucking hospitals near me right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the truth is, is that they probably like it. I mean, the, the healthcare workers are probably the same kind of dumb liberal as the people clapping in those apartments. So they probably generally appreciate people. We're about a week clapping. away from turning on nurses and doctors. In it this is like, if, if I were a yeah. nurse or a doctor and you were clapping for me, I'd be like, please shut the fuck up and go home. But I'm also yeah. the kind of guy to become somebody that helps people. Yeah. There's no such thing as suffering in silence anymore. Like, you know, just just hold it in. Like every yeah. nurse is on Twitter crying. It's like, yeah. hold it in, you know? Yeah. Just I'm trying. Be stoic. Be I, stoic. I just check in every four or five days and I'm yeah. like, uh You should you know, know what was the movie with like uh where like they would just come like every four or five days and like up on a mountainside and try to tune into a radio frequency to see if anybody like like uh, you know, after society collapses. That's what I do. And then every time I check in, um yeah. We're in the exact same place. You should have known that like panic has fully set in when Britain stopped going with the, the herd immunity model or whatever the fuck Britain was doing. Yeah. Britain's whole thing is like, uh, is like, you know, the whole stiff upper lip, keep calm and British on bullshit. Like that Britain's want nothing more than to be firebombed all directly to hell and be having tea while it happens and not show any kind of, Anything other than just general pleasantry to each other. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. So the second British people are like, oh, now it's time for us to panic. It's it. That's over. The whole yeah, world. British panic sounds so much, uh, so much nicer and more calm. But it's not. They're panicking now. Are they? Are they panicking? It just are sounds like it sounds like. Uh, you know, it sounds like they're fucking just British, British people's lives aren't that dear. British people mainly just want to go to a pub and watch soccer. The idea that soccer isn't around is a big that shows that we're in trouble or they're in trouble because that's the majority of British people just live to watch people kick a ball. That is why they exist. Yeah. I think that's they're the majority of the rest of the world. You remember the retarded uh, son from Eastern Promises? 
Yes. 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 Slit on the way to the soccer game. That's every yes. person. I yes, know that's Russian. every <laughs> the character is Russian. But yeah. that's every British person is the <laughs> that's every... I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Are they are they gonna are they there so Florida's open things up. WWE is essential business. That's good. So maybe that's what I need to do is I need to go to Florida because uh, I'm telling you right now, I'm leaving New York within Within another month or so, I will leave New York at least for a month or two until things. I gotta be able to bring my fucking kid to a park, or like. Right. A, a, the thing is, is like based on based on what they told us from the beginning, the lockdowns cannot end until there's a vaccine. Yeah, there will, there, Lewis. This, there will be no end, and then when there is a vaccine, there'll be a reason why it can also not end. Yeah, so I mean, like, because yeah. the virus will probably <laughs> mutate. I mean, it's yeah. like, it, <laughs> the, like. The, the whole the whole premise of the lockdown thing is the whole flatten the curve idea is not that you reduce the total number of cases is that you spread them out over time so the hospitals aren't overwhelmed. Yeah. Right. When you do the lockdown thing and you 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 lower the rate of infection. It's just going to prolong it. Well, you, not only do you prolong it, but you you're basically it's like if you see the total number of cases is something that we have to get through. You know like a giant block of cheese that we have to eat as a collective society of rats. If you don't do the lockdowns, we can just sort of get through that in two months. Kills a bunch of people, overwhelms the hospitals, whatever. Two months, I don't know. I'm pulling the number out of my ass. But it's a certain amount of time that if you just let this thing ravage the population. It am would- I crazy or am I the only one that thinks that the hospital should be a little overwhelmed? I've never gone into a hospital <laughs> and seen anybody hustling. <laughs> They got a fucking very Listen, layabouty type uh, attitude. Every time I've gone it. to a fucking yeah. emergency room, yeah. I'm like, where's the emergency? Lewis, you only get to fucking work. The only thing you have to understand it, or that's important is that like by doing the lockdowns, you're just sort of chipping away at this total. So if you do six months of lockdowns, it's effectively we did maybe three hours of that initial two months that we would have had if like we just let the virus run rampant. You yeah, but, you can't, but isn't the argument that if you let the virus run rampant, it causes is like, it'll cause a similar type of economic damage, if not more economic damage. Like if you know that you, an ambulance won't come when you call it, or you know that whatever, I mean, you, you're not going to do anything anyway. You know, like most people are locking themselves. No, down. Like, I but isn't that the case? Like, I, I, right, I, I, so say, I understand I like New York city. Let's just say New York city is as bad as they say it is. Right. Let's just yeah, say it yeah. is. That's not the case for the rest of the fucking country. There's 300 mm-hmm. cases in the state of Texas. Yeah. Yeah, Louisiana is fucked. There's, yeah, there's places. Yeah. There's that a are few fucked. places there's that been, are fucked. There's been zero consideration in terms of how policy uh, has been enacted with this thing that takes into consideration like regionality, uh, fucking people's age or, or like uh, 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 unique circumstances. People not want to die. People, people wanting to die. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people want to kill themselves anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great point. There's yeah. tens of thousands of people that check out voluntarily yeah. every year. Yeah. Like it's like, so here's the, here's the thing. It's like, so the numbers that are coming out of Europe now are like 50% of the fatalities in Europe were in nursing homes. Nursing homes okay. have, have an average. Once you go into a nursing <clears throat> home, the average life expectancy is 13 and a half months. The median is five months. So 50% of those deaths are people that were going to die somewhere in between six months, six, to, six months to 18 months. Anyways, and you can say like, oh, that doesn't mean you can justify their deaths or whatever. But it's like, no. But then maybe you should just take special precautions with nursing homes like banning visitors or whatever. And then the rest of the population can continue. Nick, Nick people that are in nursing homes have their entire lives ahead of them. You heartless <laughs> bastard. Okay. <laughs> Where they should I go? Kid? What is California like? Is California... Like if I move to California, here we go. Right California, now, is it worse Lewis. there? Is it worse there? I'm no, see, excited. I gotta be honest with you. I don't want to sound like a nut, but let me be honest. Me and my, <laughs> me and my producer drive by Cedar Sinai three times a week. There is no one there. There's no <laughs> one in the. I tell you, I'll tell you the absolute truth. There's no one in the ER. There's no. I haven't seen outside. a single doctor. I mean, I keep on seeing like the same three images of some doctor fucking now, putting listen, scrubs on. I could like You know, you yeah. know what they do the video right now that the doctors are doing the same way they show you how long it takes to put on like Hollywood special effects makeup. Yeah, that's yeah. a new COVID fucking. I mean, listen, this could kill me tomorrow, so I don't want to be that guy that's like, "There's no real," because I I know that it's real, but like in LA, it seems to be fine. Yeah. Well, LA is the, the third hardest hit state, I believe, besides New Jersey and, and New York. I got to figure out where to go. Here's my problem. Can I tell you my issue? 
so my son's mother finally was like, yeah, all right, fine. If they're keeping parks closed this whole summer and no summer camps, no nothing, and we're just going to be fucking cooped up like this, we got to go somewhere for the summer, at least two or three months or, you know, one or two she's months. Like, we got to have get an abortion. It. She's like, we got to get rid of them. If but now no she's, summer camp, no parks, we got to take them somewhere and leave. Them. She's in a relationship, like, with this guy, and it's, like, gotten very serious. Right. Very, very serious. So now I have to. Is he a millionaire? No, no, he's not. I fucking wish he was. God yeah. damn it. Is, it, is this the African American gentleman? I found out he's Dominican. He's a Dominican, oh, only- he's a Dominican gentleman. He's a gentleman. <laughs> yeah. um, he's Dominican. He's dark skinned Dominican. I, I, uh, you, I enjoyed baseball, good sir. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's time for my haircut. Mm. Hop hat. What's a, what Might I have Bruce a guy? vanilla Dutch master, please? <laughs> Does uh, anyone have a bus transfer? <laughs> Why could I bother anyone for a spare bus transfer? I'm a Dominican gentleman. <laughs> ah, I seem to be out of bread. What? So you're going to take them somewhere where there are parks? I got to find out whatever the most Trump supporting state is. And Dude, I need in to Ohio, go there. In Ohio and Michigan, these motherfuckers are like, our, our freedom, our I saw the best fucking picture. Somebody was <laughs> yeah. responding to like Rachel Maddow, and it's a picture right. of like the Revolutionary War, and the, the British are saying, put on your mask. <laughs> and the Patriots are saying, kiss my ass. <laughs> 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 and you know what, man? I fucking love those people. Because yeah, you know what? Too. It's like they, they're not, they're probably, I mean, who knows? I'm, like my whole thing with this is like, the, the, we've gone wildly off the rails with models and now everyone being a fucking expert with epidemiology right, and true. like conflicting information from the media that contradicts itself within the time frame of a single fucking day. And it's like, I'm not. I never. I posted I a thing from the Washington a- Post the other day where it said New York. I forget the numbers, but it was like uh, the U.S. reported twenty one hundred deaths on Tuesday, and then in the same article it said New York reported thirty one hundred deaths on Tuesday. I was like, how is New York reporting more deaths than the? the they nation? left that out because New York just like tacked on an additional like thirty eight hundred deaths the other day that were like probable co- COVID cases. Yeah, but New York, on, Somebody it, got it, shot in the face. And that was COVID. Like, yeah. New York is just like, abortions are now COVID. Yeah. So where's the state? You're saying, you're yeah, saying are there states death. right now, what's the best state for me to go with my son, his mother, her Dominican boyfriend? Um, uh, Hubei province in uh, People's Republic of China. Yeah, the problem, Lewis, is any state, they don't really want your caravan of Dominicans from New York. Yeah. I'm just going to lie, know? though. What are they going to do? It. Everyone says that. They're like, oh, they're going to ask you when you go to another state. Like, I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm from fucking Connecticut. I got here three weeks ago. Yeah. What are they going to do? Yeah. It's true. Like they said, there's a, 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 an order in New York to wear a, a face mask. This is a yes. very weird thing that they do, right? So there's a new order on, on public transportation where you, if you can't social distance, you have to wear a face mask. But then you just take it a step further and you go like, or else what? Like, what happens? Do they arrest you? Do they find you? And they go, oh, well, they're not actually enforcing it there's no way to enforce it but they're really just testing the waters to go all right well this is the first step and they go all right people aren't freaking out all right well now it's going to be a fine the next step is like, to arrest people it's sort of fucking crazy i just don't want to i i don't wear the mask i i don't do any of the like i stay away from people but i just can't fucking i don't know i can't feel like i'm not I don't have the freedoms that I normally have. And, Dude, people and, are know, psychotic because I've been, I've been like, you know, going yeah. off on, I've been, it's been go off season for me about this fucking thing. And I, I'm getting people like, you know, I always get fucking hate for all the shit that I say. But with this, I mean, it's like unreal. Oh yeah. People are like, you, you have to kill yourself. You're putting people at risk. How dare you say that the fucking model was wrong? Like, just literally losing their fucking mind. Well, it's sort of crazy because it's like, all right, dude, uh, we are actually practicing social distancing. I haven't uh, interacted with another fucking human in weeks. I don't go right. out. There's nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. Yeah, so I can't question it. I can't sit here as I'm twiddling my thumbs and go like, oh, we... Just even being like remotely skeptical about the thing, people get like furious about it. I mean, like more angry than they do at fucking racism. Yeah. Yeah. Outright, outright racist things that I say. They're like, there's a lot of people that are like enjoying this because they have money or they're able to work from home. And then they're just like telling everyone to like, 
like uh, my favorite thing, people are like, oh, the swans are back in the canals of Venice. Yeah. The earth is healing. I would we literally. Needed this. It's swans like, guys, can go extinct. That, if how, I can, how funny, if I how can do skank fest in September, okay. I could. Uh, swans can literally go extinct. Yeah. How about this? What if we find out we do this thing, the social distancing or whatever, and then it turns out climate change all of these doom and gloom models about how like it was too late to act it was too late to act in 2000 yeah. it's too late to act now i have to listen to my dipshit liberal friends last year talk about like i don't know if it's ethically right to raise a child in this world and it's like oh yeah. is that it or you just want to continue fucking 22 year olds in bushwick all the time and so that's mm-hmm. your you know you're like justifying well, there are 20 having, of them yeah not having a fucking <laughs> Not having a relationship in your head or, you know, whatever. Point is, is that like, what if we find out that climate change is entirely reversible in a span of two weeks because right. of the social distancing thing and literally at any time you can just completely erase the effects. And what we're really waiting for is to just whatever, whoever has enough money to completely change over to sustainable energy or nuclear or fucking, you know, uh, uh, yeah, uh, hydro, hydrogen cells or whatever, just yeah. waiting until it makes the most sense financially to switch over to that model than it does. And then climate change is no longer a problem. Meanwhile, developing countries that probably will still, re, re, you know, rely on fossil fuels, it'll now be illegal for them to pursue that. Nick, this yeah. is not good for your psyche. I, I'm looking at the probably wild not. look on your face right now. Now, and yeah. I'm just like, this is no, you need to. You're not even a social person, you're like an anti social person. But I think you need some sort of, I think you, you know, what it is. I think you need everyone else to be acting normal. Well, what the fuck, what the fuck am I supposed to do? You can say, Oh, yeah, I don't no. think this is good for you. Well, okay, well, what do I, I mean? <laughs> it's the world. <laughs> I'm just so seeing how know. big your beard is and how wild your eyes look right now as you talk about this stuff. And now you're picking your teeth. So I'm just, I'm, I'm just not, saying. I got you. I guess you're, I like, like, you're, become, you're becoming like a young Castro, and I think it's becoming. <laughs> like, I think it's a becoming. I like it, actually. Yeah, it's not I, bad. I got a better beard than him. I, um, I'm just fucking, I'm sitting around. I'm doing more watching of television than I ever have. What is Ralph Sutton doing? Like, how, how has this impacted his ability to ship 17-year-old Norwegians over here? Like, as he... He's, How is this impacting Ralph human is enjoying trafficking? it because what Ralph does is the way Ralph gets chicks is Ralph will start liking girls' pictures on Instagram and right. then he'll send them a little message. And then, yeah, you know, but do you want to live in like, America? Do you like want money? Yeah, they do call that the Ralph food? technique. Is yeah. <laughs> no one has ever thought of such a thing before. No, 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 no. But it's I not just that, pictures. Nick. It is a complete disconnection from rejection, right? So Ralph plays a straight up old school sales game. And he knows that his ratio. He told me his yeah, ratio. Like it was, it. It's so funny. Tim's question was, "How is Ralph doing?" And he's like, "Well, here's the thing about Ralph: the way he gets pussy." Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that's what he's talking about. That's the way what, Ralph has stayed out of jail for many years. Is, yeah, yeah. He makes the woman make the first move that way if they're under 18 you just don't ask yeah yeah <laughs> ralph doesn't do entrapment he yeah. does an old he, school sales game he does he, he he will get a response from one out of 200 women he told me yeah one out of 200 women will respond back to his advances right and he just completely dis like at most other people after like four or five women don't respond they want to kill themselves right Ralph has a demo of science Ralph. where he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, 200 women. That's it. All I got to do is all I got to do is contact 200 women. So and the then qu- eventually. Yeah. But the question was, how is he doing now that he can't do that? Because yeah. we're all supposed to be quarantined. No, well, he's doing well because now because he gets to just lay out all that <laughs> foundation. <laughs> he's not closing the deal right now, but he's just putting in the foundation. And now he right. said that his ratios are higher because people are bored. So where he was getting one out of 200 women to respond. Now he's getting like one out of 50 to respond, which is still bonkers and sad. Yeah. Smart. It's smart. He's doing the right thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This Timmy, only got you? Six have you hooked up at all left. since, yeah. since this all happened, Tim? Pussy. What'd you say? Have you hooked up at all since this has happened? No, I haven't had anyone at my house except my producer. Because I'm not trying to get this and then drop dead. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I think you can get it and die. I don't know how. I mean, there, so there's you, definitely cases die, where people just drop dead. If you die, I will pay all the rents in your in your building, like Michael Che did for his grandmother. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I think it's good that Michael Che spent $800 paying all the public <laughs> housing rents for 160 units. He like spent, it's literally a thousand dollars. Like each After unit section is eight, it's $18 per month for yeah. each unit. Every unit's $200. People are like, this is a hero. I'm like, good for him. 
but I can also do that. I'll pay the rent for nine buildings. How about that? I'll give health care to three buildings for four hundred dollars. I mean, ah, shit. I'll feed and clothe everybody in that building. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that was nice of him though. It was fucking good. Yeah, no, he's a good dude. He's a class act. God love him. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. It's like people got to fucking with celebrities telling everyone to fucking stay in. It's like, guys, fine. If you, if you, if Jessica Alba wants to say everyone needs to stay in and fucking be preachy about it, bitch, you're worth like a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. 20 million. Take 20 fucking million and donate it to the relief cause. Go buy fucking masks. Go take 20 fucking million. This, these celebrities, money? all these Hollywood people, there's hundreds of millions, billions of dollars that is just sitting there that yeah. they will never touch. They should use the money years. to rebuild the towers. Right. <laughs> and, and then we, and then we not, house, you know. then we turn the towers into uh, a giant oh, hospital. Yeah, COVID. Which is, still won't be enough room. What yeah. if celebrities started buying projects? Like they, Jessica yeah. Alba just bought a project. The Jessica sell- Alba houses. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Matt I'm Damon just bought. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. housing in Boston. Uh, well, who you stepping to, son? This is the Gwyneth Paltrow project. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a one fifteen, baby. I'll be in the Paltrow projects all day. <laughs> Paltrow Crips. <laughs> what you still- playing, baby? I'm from I'm from the Dermot McGill. <laughs> yeah, Dermot Mulroney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, we live in a we 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 live in the Reese Witherspoon complex. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know him. He's, yeah. he he be staying up at Amanda Palmer by Neil Gaiman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. He's in the, he's in the Nev Campbell Tower. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. It's the Frederick Douglass Reese Witherspoon house. <laughs> the right Witherspoon now. house. By the way, Reese Witherspoon <laughs> sounds like an old black leader as well. <laughs> she does. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, yeah, but it, it's like, like, yeah, I like talked to a few bottle. people that are celebrities and they're, what's great about how socio, like they're sociopaths, a few of them were like, hey man, it's a really, <laughs> they're like, it's just such an interesting time. They're like, life was getting very superficial before this. They're like, I think this will refocus things in a very interesting way. It's like, oh, you're completely like yeah, detached. detached. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. It, this will not touch you in the fucking slightest. I mean, and not even a little. Here's the thing, and not to, and like I, you know, I said before, everybody just projects their own bullshit on this thing, which I'm doing myself. But like, yeah. how how this thing draws out into the light, how fucking stupid all of the like woke Hollywood stuff is. Not woke stuff yeah. in general, but like the idea that like we need more disabled billionaires, right? You know? <laughs> like, it, like everyone, we need to give TV shows to people, whichever handicapped person shows up first and screams right. about it the loudest, which right. is like, fine, do that. But no, it is not important and it'll never yeah. be fucking important. And yeah. this thing, I mean, because, you know, LA Times published that article that I sent it to you. Yeah. We talked about it. Yeah. But, it's like they were supposed to be the future of Hollywood. It's like they were the yeah. diverse, uh, the, here's diverse Hollywood and coronavirus has mm-hmm. stunted their careers. It's like it's, that, yeah. that was the preeminent issue to them. It, like yeah. they, thought, they thought that the next step in the world was that we're all supposed to be at home watching somebody with three legs and one arm, fucking, right. you know, navigate the world. <clears throat> right. And it's always about sexy. It's like nobody can. Yeah. Everything's like, I want to be sexy. It's like, I, I don't have feet and I want to be sexy. It's like, mm-hmm. listen, not everyone can be sexy. Yeah, that's Just, an impossible task. What are you doing? <laughs> like, like, what you, sexy to who? Like, the quotes will be like, yeah, you know, I don't have a face. You don't usually see people without faces in movies. It's like, yeah. right. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah, Lizzo said she's like <laughs> doing an OnlyFans, and I said it would be better if we just we all get to bet Bitcoin, and then she steps on one of those Six Flags scales, and we all get to place <laughs> wagers on how much she weighs <laughs> on any given day. Because when you get up to her, you know, the regular person they their weight fluctuates maybe right. three, three to five percent a day, but with Lizzo, because she, that's those are that's an astronomical difference in the daily numbers. Yeah. You know, it's like today, what did you weigh? 978 pounds? <laughs> you know what's interesting about Lizzo? There's not one person there's not one person on her team that can be like, hey, why don't you why don't you calm it down? Like yeah. there's no one in her life that can be like, hey, maybe mm-hmm. no dessert tonight. Well, you know? no, because the problem is as soon as <laughs> you start having person. this side of the conversation, people <clears throat> 
you know, people immediately jump on like, oh my God, you're a piece of shit. You're fat shaming. And then the other side, yeah, which is, shit. Which, that's which, over. By the way, that's but over. All, but all yeah. of these things are fake. None of them are real. So the mm -hmm. other side of it is a, bu there, it's a bunch of people that are being dishonest, right? So yeah. people that are pretending to be angry that you're fat shaming, they're not. Or people that pretend that they think she's beautiful. And I'm like, <gasps> nobody, nobody thinks that being that big right. is actually attractive. Right. Well, that's, right. Yeah. That's the prime driver with all of this shit is that the, the people themselves become like marketing campaigns for these leg legacy fucking systems. You know, it's right. like Comedy Central or whatever. They're like, well, nobody's watching Comedy Central anymore. Our flagship show, the funniest thing on the network is libertarian and which now just is synonymous with fascists as far as our online critics are concerned. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we'll just throw money at like this diversity thing. I don't know. And it's like an extension of the Dove Real Beauty campaign where it's all hollow. It's all superficial and it's not really Be hot and rich, in my opinion, those things, right? Those things which are now demonized, right? Eat the rich, yeah. you know, you, you know, you know, being you know, being good looking is not, no, no, those things rich, kept people no. on fuck rich pe people still. I mean, yeah, everyone yeah. on the, everyone on this podcast right now is doing pretty well. So this, That's the, right. the reality, <laughs> so the reality is <laughs> wanting to be rich or beautiful kept you on the fucking straight and narrow. And even if you, it was almost like you were aiming for this thing that not everybody could achieve, but we were all going towards something. And I think people were better I will people say that's because true. of I it. I did start comedy because I wanted to be rich and beautiful. Mm -hmm. Those were my two goals. Yeah. Those were my two goals. When I walked in the creek in the cave, I said, I'm walking mm -hmm. out of this building rich and hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tim, you want to be rich and hot. Stop acting I like do. that's not what you actually want, you fucking Hollywood phony. If you I had a, G, want... if a G, if you could run a know. fucking I mean, match has, right now. He has been wearing the same three shirts since. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, these are from a, a, a catalog called King Size. <laughs> and if you can find another place that treats me with respect, there yeah. was one fat store in Beverly Hills, I swear to God. The only people who shopped at it was DJ Khaled, Shaq, <laughs> Fortune Rizzo. Seamster, and myself. <laughs> and they closed it. And they closed the whole store. Yeah. You, actually do, you dress exactly like Fortune Feamster. Fortune, Fortune Feamster has a great look, dude. She does. Looks, she looks she like a look. buttered biscuit. I want. She looks cozy. Well, she's got the same clothes as all those like fucking like uh, 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 Dick and Jane book kids. <laughs> <laughs> she just like stole Dick and Jane's clothes and is wearing right. them. <laughs> Yeah, oh, but it, Ray Kump made a good point. He's like, listen, oh, like Lizzo wants to be a Disney princess. It's like, just fucking be a fat bitch. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you, you can't be, you know, you can't be the little mermaid if you don't have feet. I mean, you can, yeah. I guess you're fans. Yeah, but Lizzo, like, just, you're, it, you know, accept your role. Yeah. Yeah, she's not the little mermaid. She's much more like Ursula. She she looks actually like <laughs> Ursula, a sea oh. witch. Lizzo. Lizzo. Yeah, she tried to be Ursula in the in the, in the live production of of uh, the Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. I I would it would be great to do once you know we live in the full apocalypse and there's no laws. Right <laughs> in eight months. Yeah, it's just to produce do like hey I'm 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 gonna front the money for it. I'm gonna say I'm producing yeah. the new live action Little Mermaid, yeah. and we got all yeah. the top actors in Hollywood. And then I just lock them in a tank of water and film them. Drowning. <laughs> Drowning. <laughs> it's a whole new world. I don't know. Whatever that's. I think that's Aladdin, but whatever. Has everyone okay. in there accepted Lewis? Like, why are there not as many comedian suicides as I was counting on and expecting? And looking I, here's my problem, dude. I've I've been trying to tweet about the lack of comedian suicides for. Isn't that crazy? Four or that five no years. One's off themselves? Can yeah. I tell you my problem is you have to put six months between the last comedian suicide and when you can make a joke like that publicly, so you don't seem like you're mocking the suicide. Right. So right. I haven't been able to talk about that publicly. So it happens enough, but it doesn't happen often enough. For as much as yeah, shit as we talk now, about comedians, I, why now are people not just in mass? doing it because they're, they're phonies because they're not actually first of all right. comedians love the fact that they don't actually have to fail it doesn't have to be their fault right now right so everyone yeah. loves this they get to sit there and they go like whoa what was me it's <clears throat> not my fault they don't love any of that shit right so Dude, i'm great i'm dieting i'm like i'm i'm getting lean again yeah yeah it's better for <laughs> everyone to not do stand-up <laughs> why don't comedians get lean instead you know yeah why don't they get really into fitness they uh, should get shredded they should. I, I'm trying so hard to get shredded during this. Course. Lewis, you got to do the you got to do the RP diet app or the spreadsheets. If you don't have the money for it, get the. I'm just I'm doing my plugs now. 
Okay. He's doing ads. Really. No, He's no, doing ads. Really you got to really get a rich wallet because you that'll should, help you out through this you time. Sh- you should try. The RP Diet app is like the best thing I've used if you're fucking late. What does it do? It just it calculates all your macros for you. Like, What least, is a macro? Start at the beginning. Proteins. Yeah, I don't, by the way, that's actually a great point, Tim. Make the because I've never understood what a macro was ever, and when people talk about it, I just shake my head like I know yep. what it is, and I have no clue what a macro, Mac- micro, macronutrients is. are: proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. So yeah, I get you, them. You, when you look Isn't at that it, everything, it, isn't that anything it's every, you can it's eat? Everything. Yeah. So when you like, you know, like look at a nutrition label. Generally, the calories are a reflection of those those three nutrient macronutrients so right, and you're getting some of your calories from each one of those categories yeah proteins and fats are or proteins and carbs are four grams per calorie and then fats are nine grams per calorie or sorry okay, so you're, it's basically calories, a split it's a split between those it's sort nine, of like zone diet almost nine nine calories per gram the other way around but right. Why it's why the app is great is because it just cal- it, week by week you weigh in and then it'll just recalculate your macros in real time. Whereas if you're doing anything else, you end up having to make your own spreadsheets, into, which is I mean, doable. This is even now, like I, I, I'm interested in this and I fucking lost interest in the middle of you explaining it. It's so difficult. I need it to be simplified. Yeah. It needs to be simplified. That's too difficult. It's macro, it micro, so eight, so nine what grams. I, what I've been on open the app and you click, on, you, you click on chicken. I'm eating chicken. You just yeah. click the button and you say, this is what I'm adding. These are my proteins. These are my fats. These are my carbs for each meal. And you plug those little sliders. It's great. It works great. I, I just do the you... diet of a professional fighter. I hit women. Yeah. And that is Tim my- was so I funny. Didn't... He was trying to do keto for like three months. And then I see him. He's like, keto. And then he's like, just posting everything that he posted. Not There was not one single keto yeah. meal. Not one time. I was keto by accident for half of a breakfast. Yeah. That, that's how hard keto is. Uh, like, it's very hard to be intentionally keto. You can be accidentally keto if you're in an Uber and you only have bacon on in your teeth right. for 15 yeah. minutes. Wait, no, it's people who do keto and then they're like, okay, first day of keto, time to eat 14 slices of bacon and half a <laughs> cup of peanut butter. And they're like, that's keto. That's yeah. what we heard. Time to yeah, drink I mean, cream of mushroom soup as a smoothie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking um oh this Louis, you'd be happy in LA. You come to LA to sun, the fun, you'd be happy. Bring the whole family. I know I would too, but they're it's they're all fucking faggy and uh You won't come back to New York, dude. I'll tell you right now. You'll 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 stay in LA, you'll establish West Coast Gas Digital. I'm telling you, you'll thrive. At here. this point, I like doing Legion of Skanks more with Jay and Dave via Zoom than I like doing it in person. <laughs> so, <laughs> in Dude, what do you think about comedy clubs? Like, they're all very unethically telling people to buy. Um, like, like I won't promote any reschedule, 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 promote any dates because I know that they're not going to happen. But these comedy clubs are lo- using ticket sales to float themselves with cash, and yeah. they're saying buy. Buy gift saying, like, cards. Yeah, buy gift cards. Dude, you don't know if, if or when you'll open up. That's so yeah. fucking unethical. It is unethical, but nobody's yeah. bad. They're yeah. doing what they can do. I can't hate, you know, if, if this is everything you got, you don't have the money to fucking float yourself for six months. You know, what are, they're not, you know, they're not fucking, you know. And dude, why are we doing fundraisers for the staff when everybody who owns these is millionaires? Yeah, yeah. Why, I agree. What, what is I that? why don't you liquidate your fucking assets while you can and then distribute that money to the staff? Louis yeah, C.K. donated $20,000 to the Comedy Cellar staff. Yeah, we also lost our jobs. Why are we paying, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, you know, Joe I, Harari's I, people are the whole reason this is happening. So I said that, I said that, <laughs> I said that the last time we did a podcast, Sam. The amount yeah. of money that I, I, I lost so Joe much Harari's more money right? than, what you He's say? He's an Orthodox Jew. They're, they're oh. spreading this like fucking, like people on a cruise ship. <laughs> and I'm supposed to donate money to him. Joe Harari would be a hilarious name for a Chinese guy. (laughs) (laughs) Joe Harari. (laughs) Yeah, he's in line somewhere and he gets to the counter and they're like, what's your name? And he's like, (laughs) ah. Or or a guy from Boston. I hate hate having to do this. A Chinese Chinese guy from Boston. Mm -hmm. Joe Ha. Ha. What do you think happens? Do you think all these clubs are going to close? 
Uh, I think a lot of them are. I think a lot of businesses. Are. I already Stops. know like ten businesses that have closed. It's easier to Wait, just what, fucking. What businesses have closed? If you, if you, it, here's the thing. It's going to be all forgivable, right? So if you have to close your door because of this, because the government essentially makes you, you're going to be able to either get a fucking uh, a lot of that money recouped, or you'll be able to, you know, whatever whatever the repercussions are for going bankrupt and closing your business, are, it's going to be all forgivable. So businesses that are doing that are just getting by are going to, you know what? It's a better fucking move to just sink this shit and start fresh. Dude, it may turn out to be that everybody goes out of business and Andrew Schultz is the mayor of New York. Yeah. Like he may own new, he may own New York after this is all done. Instead, yeah. instead, of, a, instead of a key to the city, he gives away a sneaker. Yeah. He may, own, he may literally own all of New York city after this. Podcasters are the only people left that can, they, that are like surviving. Yeah. It's, it's very funny. It's, it's very, hilarious. It's very funny to sort of be edged out of entertainment, I guess. <laughs> well, what about what, what happens when we run out of movies? The There's going to be a moment where we just the last fucking Trolls World Tour is played on demand, and there's nothing else filmed. Yeah, well, there will be in China, and we'll have yeah. to use the Chinese cinema. Yeah, <laughs> it'll it'll be reverse. Yeah, I suggest <laughs> learning Mandarin now and getting ready for <laughs> actionless on Chinese films. <laughs> Yeah, James, James will grow up watching Chinese cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I fucking, this fucked me up today. I was, uh, like, I've been waking up with, like, a shoulder pain every day for it's cor- it's coronavirus. a week. It's coronavirus. About a week. Just a weird little, like, I get it's up in the morning. COVID shoulder. Yeah. You got I COVID push shoulder. myself up, and I can't, and I feel like a pain. And I've, I haven't mentioned it to anybody. Not a single Smart. person. It's just, <laughs> I'm trying Smart. to hide the, the injury. <laughs> I got a big Smart. fight coming up. Yeah. Today on fucking Instagram, I get advertised this pillow for waking up with shoulder pain. I haven't looked anything up. I haven't mentioned it. I'm telling you right now. I've you only think it's because Instagram it. looks at your last name Gomez and assumes you have a physical job? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm saying there's something they're they're reading our thoughts. There's so, there's something going on. That was fucking did you Google, crazy. Did you Google how to? Because that's literally what happened. If you Googled fucked up shoulder, no, that's exactly it. I did not Google. I, obviously, that would be it. That happens all the time, and you that to a fucks me up a little bit too. About it? Did you talk to a friend? On, okay. Nope. I remember yeah. years ago, maybe two, three years ago, before I even knew that this shit was happening, I, I was meeting my weed dealer. I was like, meet me on 17th and 1st or whatever the, the address was. And then I opened up my um, my Google and a map popped up and it was in there. And I was like, they're fucking listening to our calls. They're at, But this is a different level. And then I also got an email from a guy. I got an email and, and in the subject line, it said my password. Not to my email. It was like an old password, another password that I had, right? I don't use it anymore. Yeah. But then it said when I opened up the email, it said, um, Wow, so you I got an me- email and the subject was faggot. <laughs> it was, it was yeah, by the way, what are they adding? Somebody just pillow. sent me an email and my password was in the subject. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyways, here's my, here's my sponsored content is this old house stream 41 years of this old house. My shit's great. Do I'm you doing, watch this old house? Um, no, but it? I could, I okay. could, you know, I mean, that's something that I would, I, I, I think you would like it. The only show that I ever really got into that's like sort of skewed HGTV wise was, um, I watched a lot of property brothers. Oh, interesting. I, I watched house hunters where, they would go and try to find houses, but property what, brothers uh, would come on after. Yeah, more all right, right here. Than let that. me let me read you this. So I get all right in the subject line. It says uh, my name, then it says my password, and then it says uh, transfer one thousand dollars in Bitcoin to the address below. You may well be thinking, why the hell would you do that? Well, prepare yourself due to the fact that I'm going to tremble your entire world today. I had a dangerous mal- malware infect your computer system and also. Re- record movie of you using your webcam while browsing adult sites uh-oh mm-hmm. this this is one of your passwords this is the password if you don't believe me reply seven and i'll be re- and i will randomly share your video with seven people you know yes i have access to your address book as well at this moment what what uh what wouldn't it be I- better if they went at you if they sent you an email they're like listen we know you can't read you own a business and we know you can't read. Yeah. So here's the reality. We saw you trying to, we taped you trying to read a book to your son. It's horrible. You can get like every third word. Reply seven and we will show everyone that you're a business owner that cannot actually read. This was a plot line of an episode of uh, 
Black Mirror. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Absolutely. So, but I mean, it was it's pretty crazy. I mean, he legitimately they got my passport somehow. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, jerk off to porn. I almost think it's kind of funny. It's you, just, probably, I, you, you got your they got your password for your email. No, it was my old it was an old password for my. Here's what I think it was. I tried to sign in to Amazon, and I think I went to like Amazon.com, but I, I I had a typo in the thing. Yeah, and those things will send you to like a, a, a type in your password thing, and they tell you to keep on retyping it in. What happens? Not actually, yeah. What happens often is like people use the same email address for like decades. You know, and then they'll mm -hmm. be on a forum or something. They'll jo they join all the shit that they forget about and they get lazy and use the same password for everything. And like, especially like older forums or whatever, they'll all, they'll get like, you know, there's exploits for all that forum software. If it's not updated, then somebody will get access to that database. And then your password that you used on that forum is just floating in like a, a you know, probably just on pace bin. So then they, yeah, they, they, email, they email, email you and then and they, they just email, email password. Yeah. They just email all those. It's like a, a, an email that goes out to everybody on that, that list, yeah. you know, saying like, Hey, here's your email. Here's your password. Yeah, well, I, I at first I was like, yeah. What's fuck. your what, what email was it? What do you mean? What email? What what email address did they have the password for? I'm not going to tell you, say the email address on the podcast. Well, just text Dude, it. To I don't. I don't even know my email password. I'll look it like, up. Like if I get logged out, I'm fine. I just have to keep resetting. it. What are you going to look up? I don't know what you mean. I'm going to see if it's there's. You You're can see if you could find my password on an email address. Yeah. We're gonna try to find a video of you jerking off, <laughs> dude. If you video. can find a video of me jerking off, if you could break into my computer, mm -hmm. have the camera go on to me jerking off, you have permission to go and post that. Yeah. Why don't you just you use your play. phone? Just use your phone. What if I did? What if you I jerk did? off on your phone? You can just you just watch porn on your phone instead of like involving the, no. the Mac. Yeah. I I pull up a picture of an asshole on my phone and then I duct tape around my head <laughs> and so i just have a, I, an asshole direct just to your face. eye yeah. my face and then i'm just furiously beating off around my apartment and i go quarantine motherfucker i pull up a tweet from a nurse who's sad and then the guy under it replies you're a liar i just jerk off to that <laughs> would that have freaked you out though if somebody had that because it did for a second for one sure. second it made me go like oh shit i guess dude. But yeah, I don't know. Didn't really care. Then I Googled it and it's a pretty common scam. You know, they just get the fucking guy. I'm assuming what they do is they're waiting for the guy that's jerking off the child porn. That's a little bit stupid. <laughs> and yeah. then he's like, oh, one of those dumb pedophiles, not one of those smart pedophiles. He's like, listen, not buddy, every, dude, not every pedophile. Tim, yeah. Not every pedophile is going to be stupid or unsuccessful. Of fact, course, I bet you, most of them aren't. I bet you most of them are doing pretty good for themselves. Most of them are doing great because being a pedophile means you have to succeed in order to shelter your pedophilia. <laughs> satiate, satiate your lust. <laughs> yeah, the, the reason that yeah, you're gonna a, be a lot billionaire. of people we know are not successful is they're not pedophiles. That's the problem. <laughs> Everyone at Gas Digital looks like a pedophile, but they're not. So they're just Look, most of them probably are. They're just not successful enough to realize their dreams. It's a you're great point. really, you know. Dude, the I, staff at Gas Digital somehow keeps looking scragglier and scragglier like i saw a zoom meeting you had the other day and it's like there's three people that i hadn't seen before that are literally just like people that you runaways or people you found people whose parents died of coronavirus i don't know how you're finding these people yeah they're very passionate you can teach somebody how to edit you cannot teach yeah. somebody how to be dependent on seven dollars that's true it's a good can't, point that's you can't a very specific personality type that you can basically get to do slave right. labor. yeah so okay. here so so you're i just pulled up your email address lewis oh, and it, you used it on these websites the b2b website daily motion evite linkedin myspace patreon and zynga and all What's of zynga? those zynga is like i think it's the words with friends website okay yeah. um, but that one is actually the one. So in, in 2019, Zynga was hacked and the uh, your password from Zynga or words with friends, that the hash of your password is in a database somewhere. So, so if that's the same as your email, then that's how they did it. Right? Yeah, it's part of my Zynga hack. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, that's probably it. Yeah, maybe. Well, that's why you got to use how the f Nick, how do you stop? Get the fuck out of my internet shit, man. I don't I'm like not. how much information you have on me. It's all public information. 
What else have I signed up for with this email? Uh, uh, Tony Robbins courses, Gary <laughs> Van <Vanierchuk>. Livingwithaids.com. <laughs> you know. Yeah. How to scare your child without physically harming them. No, you can just go to, there's a website. It's have I been uh, P W N E D.com. You put in your email address and it'll let you know if your email appears in any databases of like, that would have been hacked. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. But that's why you got to use a different password for everything. And I don't, that password that he had, the reason I don't give a shit is because the password that he had is an older password that I really don't use for anything anymore. Yeah, you should change anything. your passwords like once every six months to a year or whatever, use a different password for everything. Use two FA wherever you can. I mean, what I try to do is here's my problem. Okay. I, I have like three or four different passwords. And I forget them and I don't know what is to what. So I have to just keep on typing them all in. So I've now come to a place where like every time I get to one where it's not this one specific password, I go in when I remember and I change it. And now I'm just getting everything to be one password, one specific password, nice and easy, nothing too crazy. It's so funny, dude. I was like, here's why you should, here's what you should do. And then you go, you know what I've been doing? The opposite. <laughs> The exact opposite of that. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I just have one password. I say it on my show. I tell I, everyone yeah. what it is. I, I let pass- people know. Mm-hmm. That's dumb though, man. Because, you know, especially, you know, you say that publicly. People are going to like try now. People are going to try and get into your shit. And if they, you have one password and they find it anywhere, <clears> it's like all your shit overnight is just. What are they going to do? I mean, what can they really do with my your password? PayPal, your PayPal account. They can go. They can sign up for fucking. I, I don't know. I, they can transfer money, get it into cryptocurrency, steal money from you if it's your bank password. I mean, there's a lot of things. I, that can can I say this though? I never check my bank balance. It doesn't matter if that's your fucking password. They can. So log- how would I even know? This is what I say. Right. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I didn't pay him that. That's fine. Uh. I got to figure out where to go as well. I'm thinking either I'm going to go upstate or I'm going to go to California. Go up, but, go upstate. Go, well, you know, upstate California. You sh- it, what, do you, what do you mean? Like come to California for like a couple of months? Yeah, just a month or two. <laughs> yeah, you should. You should. You, you should get a house. Life, I can just rent a house, right? Get like an Airbnb. Dude, like rent the house on Carbon Beach in Malibu. Like rent, you know, spend a few, spend a few hundred thousand dollars, have a good summer. Yeah. I mean, it, it's better to have a place. Where, I'm in a little two bedroom apartment in New York City. Should I move? Nothing, like- last night, there was gunfire in the streets outside of my building because what's happening in my um, neighborhood now is all of the like, it's a very gentrified neighborhood in Harlem, but all of the white people and all like the doesn't the, sound doesn't sound too gentrified. <laughs> No, yeah, it doesn't. All the white now, people are buying guns and killing each other. No, all the white people are staying <laughs> in fucking Dang doors shit. and social distancing. When it's Paltrow project. <laughs> and all the brown people don't give a fuck. All, but it's not even the brown people. It's like all of the fucking really ghetto people from the projects. So that's the only thing that are in the streets now. And now it's just like nonstop. Like 2, 3 in the morning, there's just people. That I heard last night at 1.30 in the morning, uh, just clack. Straight up a gunshot, and then I heard yeah, yelling. The and city of New just... York is going to collapse. I don't know how to tell you this. Yeah, it's go. It's going to. You're gonna have the summer of Sam. You're gonna have high unemployment. Police are gonna get this fucking disease. They're not, dude. It's fucking shot. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah, it's just not know. worth it. I, I don't. I don't know that it's gonna. As it's a gonna mentally be... ill person, I'm ready for it, dude. Well, <laughs> you're built for it. You're built for it. Lewis has a kid. Listen, that's if that's I didn't even, have a kid, yeah. that's yeah. not even a green screen. City, Nick just decorated his apartment like that. When the city recovers in like 40 years or whatever, I'll just be right. some just deeply mentally ill old man on the train. Yeah. And be like, oh, I guess that's one of the guys from when New York used to be bad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, little do you know, you fucking moron. I had a podcast. I moved here as a blogger. <laughs> Maybe you've never heard of Come Town. Yeah. I was yeah. a mommy blogger when I moved here. Yeah, I was like um, you. I had AirPods. Yeah, I'm and I fucking... stayed in my house for eight years. <laughs> yeah, I used to use beard oil. Yeah, I was a hermit in New York City. Very hard to do. I um I'm trying to like watch new movies with my son too. Um, the so other thing about all these movies that we watch as kids are fucking horrible for kids now. Like what? Clockwork Orange. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a kids movie back when the day when we were I'm kids. Trying, doing, I'm trying to think. Yeah. So my favorite. Accused. You should you should show James. Um, show him like seven. 
Who Framed Roger Rabbit? That's that's yeah. one of the best kids movies. You should show me. <clears throat> what is it rated? Is it rated at R? It's rated R. Yeah, because yeah. Roger Rabbit gets raped in the. Uh, in Does the- it get raped in it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's who raped <laughs> Roger Rabbit? Is that, is that what was the original? What, mean, what is it rated? It's it's a the Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Who gives a shit? Show it to him. It's good. It's culturally important, dude. I'm telling you right now because you think that, and then I show him Back to the Future. And then the fucking mom's a whore. The mom's a whore. Her tits are out. She's trying to fuck her son. And it's like, it's a whole thing. It's a whole, like the, the, the idea that he would be sexually aroused watching a boy try to fuck his mom, that might fuck him up right now. That's not a, that's not a normal thought to be coming into his fucking head. I think that's paranoid thinking. No, yeah, it's not. I, I don't think, I think he'll be that's, okay. That's too far in, in, into like over parenting. I think like, I, if I had a kid, I mean, you know, what the fuck do I know? But if I had a kid, I would not like th- go by some fucking rating system. I would think it would be more important for the kid to cultivate some like understanding of, you know, what good movies are and what things people make that are good. And I like, agree. I agree. Industry. And I think it's about it's about who the kid is as well. And that so doesn't I mean think- that doesn't mean showing him Goodfellas when he's seven. But I mean, certainly who you framed can- Roger Rabbit? Also, I, Jessica Good Rabbit Fellas. is yeah, her. I mean, the, the watch Chinatown afterwards, and you'd be like, "This yeah. is the adult version." You see, the grandfather was raping his daughter, <laughs> and then his granddaughter, and they were trying I to show him, show him Requiem for a Dream, and explain to him yeah. why he shouldn't do heroin. Yeah. Explain yeah. to him is the origin story of his mo- of his grandmother. Yeah, yeah. Girls, girls, they have buttholes too, and uh, <laughs> but they're used to being able to put things in there. So when they do ass to ass, it's okay. I just remember they- from, who from Roger Rabbit, Jessica Rabbit being really over sexualized, like very, very sexy, having big fucking titties, and just you know, I just want to maintain some se- sense of innocence. I'm not great. I try. I. I sh- his mom got mad at me because I showed him Happy Gilmore the other then, day. Then, then put fucking Veggie Tales on and don't worry about it. I mean, like <laughs> that's like your options. I, like, I, you can scrutinize any one of these fucking movies. Just put Veggie Tales on. I know, but that's you, you want to have these nostalgic moments where you're showing. Maybe if you're worried about innocence, you should move out of the neighborhood with the gunshots. <laughs> <laughs> That might scare him more than a him Roger the Rabbit. That may scare him more than a whore mother in Back to the Future. <laughs> the gunshots in the middle of the night. He's moving the to be as you prefer. California Lewis. Yeah. California Lewis and California James. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Brave Little Toaster. That's a great children's movie. Are people going into the guest digital studio? Are you? Are, is that allowed or no? We would let them. Um, nobody wants to. Though. You want, people want to do a podcast. You want everyone to feel good and excited. And it's just it's, there's a weird tone. You know, right. guests aren't going to come in. So what's the point? Right. And if all the producers can work from at home and feel better and be near their families, and they, yeah, that's the thing. We're complying in that sense. You because, need their families. It, they it's don't not, have. It's not. It's not based off of being told that we're not allowed to work, it's based off of the fact that we're trying to get the absolute best quality to work out of our people. So yeah. making them come in and making them, you know, if we can adapt and make everyone feel comfortable, the overall, the shows are going to be better. The shows we really haven't skipped a beat. We're launching new shows. We, we just launched Corinne Fisher, Joe Rosa's podcast, we're launching another one next week. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's overall, it's a better move for us to do this. But there's a look, dude, fucking Skank Fest. We got to we got to cancel Skank Fest in New York this summer. There's no way to, you know, do something like that. There's no planning. it. It's too late at this point. So when you look at what it did for our 2020 year, we had to do killed one of our festivals, killed one of our Destroyed. festivals. If you look at the amount of money that we lost, it is fucking crazy. And that's why I find it laughable when we look at these comedy clubs being like, yeah, but our bus boy needs fucking socks. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. I lost I lost eight hundred million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> my projected earnings for this year were somewhere around eight hundred million to sixty billion. <laughs> I have a data model that suggests that I update. Yeah. it can my, my model can never be wrong because it's that's the nature of models is that you say yeah. enough, and when it's wrong you revise it and be like, ah, yeah. this is what I meant. So it was always correct. It was so, always correct. Yeah. There's no such thing as a wrong model as long as it right. is a model. Yeah. yeah, I um, some of the yeah, fucking been all, around this model thing is driving me insane. Well, the models, are, the projections of the models are so utterly useless. It's like <laughs> it's just enough. Yeah, talk well, about death tolls. I know. Who's on the floor? 
you get you get fucking these people that'll come at you. They're like, oh, I guess you're not really familiar with models. And it's like, yeah, you're right. I'm not. They were shoved in my fucking face prior to this thing started as this is what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, it didn't. So. Right. Am I supposed to just now? Oh, oh, you're right. I guess. Sorry, I'm so stupid. I thought when you said 240 thousand people would die, you meant it. Um, yeah, I think that uh, you gotta let people out, and if people start dying again, then you'll make a de- then we make a decision. Then it's like let's test it. If some people start dropping, then we might maybe. You know, shut it yeah, down. But you just don't yeah. know that you don't know what the numbers are. If they're going to call everything uh, COVID death, no. But I mean, like, we got it. There's got to be. We got to put this into practice a little. We got to test it. Like, mm-hmm. there's got to be some soft reopening, soft relaunch of the economy, and we'll see what happens. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you've seen. Um, yeah, I think you're going to see it in you know state to state. You'll see places, certain places. Look, even f- the fact that Florida is letting sporting events happen, I think that it's almost like a political thing where they're like, oh, no, no, just so you know, we're going to start reopening shit. And I think you're going to see other states follow suit. I just don't think New York probably. I mean, to be honest with you, it's the one state that probably shouldn't re. If 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 you're going to buy any of it, right? Yeah. The one state course. that shouldn't fucking reopen right now is probably New York because we are so close together. And you look at like they, they go to the percentages and they're like, you know, eight percent of Asians in the US are are um getting it or or um <laughs> we're not, not getting it. Whatever the uh the perc- what is it uh, that number should be higher. Only eight percent. God I'm damn. trying to remember what the, what they were talking about. They were talking about um the percentages by race. It was eight percent was Asian, ten percent Caucasian, twenty percent black. Oh, the number of cases. That's right. The number of cases total was eight percent Asian, ten percent Caucasian, twenty percent black, twenty two percent Latino. Nobody's talking about Latinos, but if you look at that, what that is. The mm-hmm. reason that it's broken down that way and you look at black and Latino households is because black and Latino households typically, um, you know, in the in the poor communities, you have smaller, tighter spaces with more people living in those spaces. So you're just having more people in households being infected with it. It's yeah, right. that. It's yeah. not about, uh, I don't know if there's if there's any other, it's about poverty in my opinion. I'm assuming poor sure. people are getting more than, than people that have money, number one, because they have to go into work, they have to ride the subway, they have to use public transportation, and then they have more people living in smaller spaces, less right. uh, access to healthcare, less cl- you know clean areas. So yeah, that's what's going on there. Yeah, no, that's 100% correct. Um, but I was then, Lewis, I Lewis is going to follow it up with something horrible. I had to like go he to- just made a, He made a beautiful point. Now then Lewis is going to turn around and be like, and that's why we have to sterilize those people <laughs> and blind them all so they can't see where they're going. I'll tell you what, dude. We should fill their apartments with rats and let the rats eat them and see if the rats' yeah. immune system can defeat yeah. the virus. Yeah. And just let the Chinese people eat the rats that ate the Hispanics, and then they'll develop rat immunity to the disease. <laughs> it's the circle of life. Me and James just watched Lion King. Yeah. I've never seen it before, but some of the intellectual yeah. considerations in Lion King really spoke to me. I turned off Lion King because I found out Scar was black, and that upset me. Um, I'm pretty sure you can see uh, the monkey's penis in the first <laughs> and I don't There's want a rape to, scene. I don't want James at such a young age to be thinking about sucking off a baboon. <laughs> yeah. That's something that reality should be something that comes to him later in life. Then later in life, when he, then he can think about sucking <laughs> off an elderly African baboon. <laughs> Dude, t- you can't tell me you don't have a kid. You're gonna think about these things when you have a kid one day. And you're not gonna, gonna just go like, I'm "Oh, what's, gonna gonna be, what's a great movie? Apart. What's a great movie versus if a movie?" Dude, Happy Gilmore. I I looked up on one of those parental websites, uh, like what like what's you know what's inappropriate, and they were like, "All right, the Bob Barker scene," which I remember. And I was like, "All right, who cares? It's nothing." Mm. And then they were like, "Yeah, he curses a little bit while he's playing golf." But then you forget where he signs the girl's tits. No, but you don't know in the extended cut. Adam Sandler sucks off Bob Barker. Like, that's yeah. the extended cut. <laughs> he sucks him off. Yeah. What about, like, Rudy? Mm. No, you, you know, I, I, had, I had, you know what? Uh, the Hobbit, the fucking uh, Ralph the Baxter Hobbit. Hobbit is great. I'm yeah, reading Harry Rings. Potter to him right now. I'm reading Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking get him, you know, trying to keep him James, engaged the with that. dwarfs in Harry Potter are Jews. <laughs> yeah. This is what every group represents. Have you ever seen the um, the bankers at the Gringotts Bank? Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, There's never been a single piece of science fiction or fantasy work that isn't just racism. 
Yeah, it's, it's true. Never, I mean, the, the bankers at the Gringotts banks are fucking just the yeah. heaviest looking Jew demons you'll ever see. It's fucking crazy. Yes. But Brian, if you want to pull up Gringotts bankers, I mean, it's crazy. It's the most racist thing I've ever seen in my entire life. If Brian just pulls up a picture of Auschwitz, I will be like the best. He's the best producer. <laughs> yeah. the funniest guy in New York. He just pulls up. He's like, yeah, man, it does look weird. Yeah. Um, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, they are. There go. Yeah, look at these fucking Jew bankers. Those guys don't celebrate Christmas. Yeah, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, yeah. So that uh, you know, that's the thing. You don't know until you know. Every one of these movies, though, even all right. I, I was watching Beethoven with my son this morning. Even Beethoven. There's some fucking moments in that movie where it's like. The whole ending of the movie, they fucking... The movie about the St. Bernard? What are you talking it's about? It's implied that the dog fucks the mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Louis, now mom. you're sounding insane. There is no... <laughs> there's nothing in Beethoven that's remotely suggestive. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the, no, there's some violence. So at the end of the movie, spoiler alert... Roger Rabbit. All dogs go to heaven. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 the Brave Little Toaster is a great movie, and it teaches you the value of... Um, of people being Toast. worthless and life, life being meaningless and pursuing something your entire life to just end up in the garbage. The crying game. Uh, <laughs> trying to think, no, there's, there's other, there's other, there's, I had, when we, this first came up, I had like a list that popped into my head immediately. Of good kids. Leaving, La, leaving Las Vegas. Leaving Las Vegas. They should do a kid's version of leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> but it, it, a kid it, in I, Dylan's candy it, store. Yeah, and also, got- oh, 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 in uh, Back to the Future, the whole scene where his father is peeping in the mom's window, the peeping Tom. My son doesn't know that peeping Toms exist right now. Yeah. So I but have then to, like, Lewis, he doesn't, he's not going to go, oh, that guy's a peeping Tom. Mm-hmm. He's going to, oh, that guy's looking in the window. Like, he's not going to be like, oh, that's a thing. He you knows why she's looking window. in the window. She's getting undressed. 100%. Oh, I remember as a kid. Yeah. I remember that scene as a kid. I remember clear as fucking day. And I was a very over-sexualized kid. I was very, I was really into like sex for, for as long as I can remember. When I was my son's age, I was already jerking off. That's grotesque. I was, I was humping like uh, pillows and mattresses and teddy bears. That's interesting. Seven. And it's because, want to know why? Because you were on camera and your mother was selling those videos to support her heroin habit. <laughs> no, it's because my mom over-sexualized me by showing me shit fucking movies. Like what? The Land Before Time? She Land really did what? show me Clockwork Orange. I was joking before. That's one that I saw when I was seven. Okay. And I remember clear as day seeing um, and learning what gang rape was. Yeah, interesting. Kid. Interesting. And I remember, like, you know, when they hold the, the, the guy down and they hold his face watching, they hold his face watching. So, so he has to watch them rape his fucking wife and they cut her titties out of the, the red thing. That scene. Yeah, well, maybe don't show James that. Maybe that one. That's. Between that sens- and Beethoven, I'm sure there's some. <laughs> there's some middle ground. I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> But I remember that's the only scene that I remembered from that movie for as long as I can remember. I just and then like flashes of the movie, but I just remembered being young and learning what gang rape was at a right. really, really young age. And then you know, really masturbating at a very young age and getting into porn gang rape. And, <laughs> and gang raping at a really young yeah. age. Yeah, and yeah. so what? How what negative impact has that had on your life? Yeah, look at you now, Lewis. You're fine. Yeah, but yeah, it's in spite because- of it. Well, yeah, but it's like what you know. I mean, yeah, don't show him Clockwork Orange, but you can show him fucking Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's they're definitely different than Clockwork Orange. They're different, I know, but you got to understand. Like, I do. It is what I'm saying is back then we didn't really consider it as much what we were showing these kids, and these jokes would slip through the cracks, you know. Right. Whereas now. You know, everything is very, very conscious, everything. And it's good. Like, like, I like the fact that my kid is, like, innocent and sweet. You know, uh, I showed him Monster Squad. The first fucking, the, the third word in the movie Monster Squad is faggot. Is the N-word. It's a, a bully. Yeah, he calls the werewolf an N-word. Wait, what happens in Monster Squad? The bully comes in and calls, uh, the, the, like, the first word he says to the kid, he, like, punches the kid. He, he goes, hey, you fat faggot. 
And I'm watching what with my son. Monster Squad? The Monster Land Squad. Before Time. That was it. Right. That's that a good one. It. Yeah. <laughs> and the dinosaur <laughs> dies. It's sad. Yeah. Well, that, I don't well, know. That's, 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 looks that's, like a penis. That's kind of The little foot is kind of dick shaped. Maybe that might not be the best thing for James. My Land Before Time kind of sucked too, to be honest with you. It, it was if you what really about, about Ozark? Before, Get him into Ozark. Land Before yeah. Time was a hack fucking thing, just like Bambi and all the other ones. They were like, let's kill a fucking mom super early in the movie, <laughs> and it was like it just wasn't okay. You know, we did, and also the Land Before Time is like an hour and ten minute movie. It's a particularly short movie. <laughs> Lewis wants a seven hour movie so he doesn't have to raise his kid with Schindler's no violence. List. Or sexual themes. Yeah. None of it. She got mad at me, though, because I showed him Happy Gilmore. It was like his mom. The whole fucking to-do. Yeah. Um, right, we're going to wrap this hey, one how up. How about the great me. mouse Just detective? That's a good one. Five will goes west. No, the, uh, I am very anti-Semitic openly with my son. Mm -hmm. So. No. Are um, you really? How about no. how about the documentary <laughs> Pedo Gate 2020? Uh, very like, good. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. You could be. I don't know. Is your Dude, I'm such a faggot with my son. I really am. Like, I, it's I, not out of the realm of possibility that you would be like, I'm raising him as an anti-Semite. That way he'll have something to rebel against when he's older. I've and always said to Lewis, he's a actually father. really smart. Lewis is a horrible friend and boss person. He hits women, but he's a good dad. Yeah. Well, he's he's a dad that considers things. He could consider yeah. things almost too much sometimes. Like right. Whether or not... At the end of Beethoven, they fucking take syringes and they... they it, the little kid, okay? The kid steals the car, smashes it through a fucking garage. The syringes that they were going to kill the dog with fly off a table and into the doctor's chest, and they presumably kill the doctor. The kid's but like, the cool. doctor's the bad. The doctor's the bad guy. But they kill him. There's nobody. So you, need, children you need killing. to explain to James that the bad guys get killed in America and the good guys live. That's the way life works. Mm -hmm. It's also, it's funny how trauma works. I think about like the, the things that I remember being traumatic for movies when I was a kid are the pink elephants on parade scene from Dumbo, mm -hmm. which like who could have predicted that? That and fucked me up too. The scene in Gremlins where they drive the tractor through the house. Yeah, don't you think it, there's more of a shot of James growing up? Oh, where they killed the old man? I think so. Okay, so so Gremlins is another one as well. So my son, it was the first horror movie that I wanted to show my son. I grew up on all these movies, and and Gremlins in my mind, I'm like, there's nothing. They bite, and there's a little bit of blood, but it's pretty fucking mild. It's not rated R. It's like PG-13, and it, you know. So th here's what fucked you up, though. There's a scene where Phoebe Cates is describing uh, how her father died. Right, so I, I don't even remember this scene happens in the movie. I'm watching Gremlins, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's great. These are little monsters that kill. Gives a shit. It's not not too violent. It's kind of cartoony. And then they go to this really weird, bizarre scene in the middle of the movie where Phoebe Cates is crying and describing how her father dressed up as Santa Claus and came down the chimney, and he just never came home one night. We you know here's what happened. Her father didn't come home on Christmas, and then two days later, they started smelling something. And it was her father's rotting corpse because he had dressed up as Santa Claus and come down the chimney and broke his neck as he came down the chimney. But I'm watching this with my son, and she goes, and that's how I found out that Santa Claus wasn't real. And yeah. then I was like, oh, okay. Well, no, they should fucking let you know that they're going to shatter a child's dream in the middle of this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they were doing much darker films back then, and we were yeah. all better for it. Listen, I got to hop. Yeah. Um, okay. I appreciate it, Lewis. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's been Thank real. For, this has been a fun one. Uh, yeah, we'll put this one out somewhere on something, uh, and we'll try to do another one soon enough. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Timmy. Right, You're a fucking man. Nick, right. Thanks, man. guys. Later, fellas. All right, All right, fellas. Later. All right gents. Have a good one.